Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan, and this is We the Govern. Today, we're going to be talking about how government impacts your life, whether you like it or not, and why the only thing you can do to make a difference is to engage and be involved. All right, we're back to Washington State, but this video is going to have uh, some issues relating to federal and st as well as state issues, so it should apply to pretty much anybody, regardless of where you live. And the main topic here is just talking about how government harms you. And essentially, what that really Im should imply is that this is why you need to be involved and why you need to actively engage in your local government process and in politics. Because the reality is, and this is an old quote, that just because you do not take an interest in politics, it doesn't mean politics won't take an interest in you. And this uh, was thousands of years ago. Pericles, a uh, Greek philosopher, said that. And it's just, it's as true then as it is today. And the reality is that government is going to take an interest in you, or politics will take an interest in you. And so because of that, you have to be engaged. And we've oftentimes heard about how, hey, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. And uh, many people wouldn't necessarily feel that way under a lot of circumstances. In fact, uh, Reagan oftentimes used that quote, saying the nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. And the reason why he said that is because oftentimes uh, the government isn't helping you in the way that we oftentimes would prefer them to do. Instead, they are actually harming you. Now, there's a big difference in what the federal government versus the state government can do uh, to make an impact in your life. Really, one of the biggest ways that government uh, impacts people is the federal government, and the biggest difference between them and the state is the fact that they have the ability to print money. And this ability to print money is actually quite a big deal and quite a big impact for you because there, and on this front, the federal fiscal policy specifically, this has been a bipartisan disaster. Both Republicans and Democrats have been terrible on this because they have racked up one of the, you know, just this massive deficit and debt, and it just keeps getting worse all the time. But now, with total Democrat control of, the, uh, of all houses in the federal government, presidency, and now most recently the Senate as well as the House, there's not even a pretense of sanity when it comes to uh, caring at all about the debt and the deficit. And there's a reason why this matters. And I want to just play this video. This is actually, uh, it, this is a good way to kind of explain it because uh, this is a parody video by Remy with Reason TV. He's just, he does a great job uh, producing these parody videos. I encourage everybody, I'm only going to play just a little segment of it here for you. But it's very funny, and he's able to combine humor with a fairly complex issue related to the Fed and the impact that uh, all this uh, just printing money and, and blowing up uh, the debt, how, why that really matters. So uh, enjoy this. Holes in this house, there's some holes in this house, there's some holes in this house, there's some holes in this house. I said certified free, seven days a week. Fed ass printing, make that currency weak. You want a wall in your backyard, extra large and extra hard. But you ain't got the cash to pay, just use that press like a credit card. Grow that debt, print that cash, like a tax that never passed. You want wars that never end, man, this beats funding them like that. You want a bridge, you want a bomb, you want a check, send out to time. We gonna park this Big Mac truck right in your fiscal garage. Let's be frank, check is blank from our secret central bank. Now, the reason why this matters to you is because, and to, to, to me and to everybody that lives uh, in our country, is that it essentially, this type of behavior by government, which has only gotten worse, I mean, it's, it's been a problem that we've had for decades, but in recent years, uh, really going back to, especially in 2008, things just started to escalate on this front, and ultimately it crashes the value of the dollar. And this is going to affect everybody. It will not matter who you are. It's going to have a big impact on you. If the value of the dollar goes away, it isn't just that prices increase with inflation. Uh, they could escalate uh, way more significantly than anything that anybody alive in America has ever actually seen. Now, we've seen this happen in other countries like uh, Venezuela or in Zimbabwe or maybe Argentina or Weimar, Germany. But to see this happen in America, I don't think Americans quite realize the significance of where this goes if the dollar crashes. And the dollar's been protected because it's a reserve currency, but this is going to have an impact on everybody because it affects the value of your savings 
means. It affects the uh, retirement dollars that you might have set aside, and it's going to have a major impact. It may be gradual now, but it's going to have a huge impact on everything related to dollars and what you can do with them and what you can buy with them. And when a currency collapses, or at least it has a significant setback, um, there's going to be a lot of problems. And so it really does matter what the federal government's doing in this area. The other element that the federal government in particular has, but this also affects you at a state level, is the power to tax. And again, another famous quote, this one from the 1800s, about the power to tax is the power to destroy. And it came out of a Supreme Court case from 1819 that uh, the Supreme Court justice uh, is oftentimes quoted this, about this, saying the power to tax is the power to destroy. And this is true. And it's because if they have the ability to take some money from you, they have the ability to take all your money. And it's also about picking winners and losers, who gets taxed and who doesn't. And this is one of the problems that most of us are going to lose in this process. At the federal level, the taxes have been uh, smaller, and that's why we're seeing such a big debt and deficit jack up. But at the state level, even, it, it also has an impact. When Governor Inslee, Washington State Governor Inslee, was running for office originally in 2012, one of his interns was quoted saying, hey, you don't need to win on a platform of raising taxes. You win, and then you just do it anyway. And in fact, Inslee at the time in 2012 specifically said he wouldn't raise taxes. But of course, he immediately, once he got into office, raised them by $1.2 billion and has been raising them by billions of dollars ever since. And unfortunately, this is the attitude that you have with elected officials like this at the state level, where Inslee uh, will look for any possible way and anything he possibly can tax. And again, every single legislative session uh, from Governor Inslee's perspective, and he seems to get plenty of support from, in particular, the Democrats in the legislature, uh, there's always new things that you can find to tax. And I'm sure that we are only two to three tax hikes away from the utopia that everybody wants. And this is not a good thing for us. Again, the power to tax is the power to destroy. If you care about the fact that you're making money and you'd like to keep at least some of it, uh, you're going to have to be engaged and involved in government. So. The other part that government oftentimes has to do, has an impact in your life anyway, is the regulatory abuse. Because uh, this is, they're basically effectively, depending on how these regulations are applied, and in particular in modern times, they're basically destroying your dreams while rewarding political allies. Regulation is again about a way of picking winners and losers, deciding that certain industries or activities are going to be regulated in a certain way and others are not. And within those industries, they're going to pick winners. Usually it's the big corporations who have the ability to hire lobbyists, the ability to fund political campaigns. They get a win and the other people get a, get a lose. And it also ha it has a significant impact in increasing the cost of goods and services in your daily life. And in particular, if you look at heavily regulated uh, elements of living, housing, healthcare, and education are just three good examples. These are some of the most regulated uh, aspects of our lives that governments heavily involved in. And all three of these have escalating costs beyond the ability of most people to keep up with them. And you know, I'm going to focus a little bit on housing. I do a lot of property rights issues. But people are excited when they have the ability to buy a house. It's an exciting event. Most people want to be able to be independent and live in, in their new home. But instead, the approach tends to be for uh, big government, and particularly modern government now, is to push this high-density, high-rise apartment complex living. And this is what they would prefer you to live in, not, not a home, not be independent, but to be kind of stuck in these sort of environments. Or worse yet, to be pushed and priced out entirely of not just owning a home, but the ability to even rent an apartment and push you out into a much more um, uh, depressing sort of environment where you're living in a blue tent or a tarp out in the woods or in these camps that seem to be popping up in the cities. Drug addiction is a big part of this, but uh, even for those in the margins that don't quite go there, uh, this is a bad outcome, and yet it has a direct, it, it is a direct impact partly on the regulation and the regulatory environment that government's imposing on the rest of us. So these are serious issues, and they're things that matter to us. And because of this, because of this power that government has, they can also destroy your community. And it really doesn't matter if the destruction of a community is accidental through incompetence or if it's willful through corruption, uh, you still suffer. 
So because of this, we really should care. You could be in Detroit, as uh, this video is from, in a factory where there used to be thousands of people working there, and because of things that changed and the government's heavily involved in destroying the city as fast as they can, you wipe out whole industries and your community completely changes. It's not the same as it was a while ago. And you'll see that in other cities as well, like, for instance, here's the city of Olympia, state capital of Washington State. This is your green spaces. This is what your green spaces look like now as they let uh, drug addicts and homeless camps uh, and garbage piles just proliferate throughout these green spaces all over the city. This is a way to destroy a city, and it's directly a result of policies and programs that your government's actually implementing. So again, just because you don't have an interest in politics doesn't mean that it's not going to have an interest in you. You don't get a choice in this matter. It, we have no choice. We have to engage. And uh, sometimes that engagement uh, looks like, you know, all kinds of different approaches that we can have, but ultimately it's about tearing down those walls or tearing down the obstacles that are in your, the way of your freedom or your liberty. Uh, we have to be engaged and we have to do that. And we have to get involved with government and we have to identify the problems and confront them and make a significant impact in what's happening in our communities because the only other option is they're going to make a significant impact in your life regardless. So the, one of the questions then is how to engage. Well, first, join with others who share your concerns. Uh, you can't do this alone. Uh, being a solo activist or just trying to do things entirely on your own is not a high likelihood of success. You need to work with other people and uh, get involved with them. Think globally and act locally. We're familiar with that phrase as the environmental movement has used it, but it's appropriate when it comes to political activism in general. You have uh, want to think globally about freedom and liberty, but you need to act locally to make an impact. That's going to be the most likely path to success. Success. If you can't change City Hall, why do you think that you can change the federal government? Uh, get involved and engage locally. That's very important. And you're one of the things, especially in light of the tendency lately of big tech and big media to uh, censor any alternative opinions or anybody who dares to question authority or to speak truth to power, since uh, big tech and big media seems to be in bed with big government, uh, we need to improve our communications with our neighbors and our family and our friends. We need to find ways of being able to get together and organize easily, and we can't rely on, on things like Facebook or even YouTube. Uh, at this point in time, as long as YouTube lets me keep the channel, I'll be here, but sometime they may decide that they want to censor uh, videos like this. So having some alternative ways of communicating is going to be very important. Finally, to engage, support those who stand up. It's not easy, and those people are going to need your help, whoever they are, in whatever capacity they have. Uh, find a way to support them. Uh, sometimes there's just going to be people who take point on certain issues or in certain ways, and they need your support. And then find your personal skills and passion and apply them specifically to the challenges that you face. Maybe you're a good researcher, maybe you're a good speaker, or you're a good writer, or you're good at producing videos. Find that skill and that passion and then apply it well and effectively, and I think you're going to find that you're going to make a significant difference. And remember, and this is very important, you're not alone. And your group isn't alone, and your community is not alone in these experiences. Uh, knowing that and understanding that, there's plenty of other people out there who have the same concerns you do. They want to be engaged, they want to be involved, and reaching out to them and getting your organization or your little group that you've organized locally, having them connected to other groups that are also concerned about these same freedom and liberty issues, that's going to be an effective way to make change over time. Uh, it isn't easy. Uh, nobody's pretending that it's easy, but government is going to be involved in your life. They are involved in your life and they can't harm you. And if we want to make a difference, we're going to have to engage, be involved. We can't go away. We can't pretend that it's just going to happen on its own. Thank you for watching. Uh, again, uh, if you want to learn more, please go to wethegovern.com. You can also look below for some of the links here. And uh, don't forget, uh, I'm kind of a fan of Remy's here. So if you get a chance, uh, go to his channel as well and subscribe to Reason TV. A lot of great videos there. And Remy just does a really good job with these parodies, especially explaining these complex issues. And just remember, it's so important for us to engage and be involved, especially in a time like this. Don't be apathetic. We have to get involved. And the future does belong to those who show up.